in faith. Live and walk in faith. Yes. Today, we shall once again be examining that most popular word, faith, and to try and see if we have some of us who really understand the word and if we really are living in faith and working in faith. Amen. As we have just read in the book of Hebrews, faith is belief in something that you perceive will be possible. From the Bible, we saw so many examples of men and women of faith, and some of whom we shall also be examining this morning to try and see if we too are living in faith. We have all read about Abraham who found favor in the sight of God and all because of his relationship with God in his actions. Amen. His act of faith towards God we are counted to him as righteousness. Amen. As we have read in Genesis 15, 6. What's so great about Abraham's faith? And what did he believe? Abraham believed family that God would give him a son or heir whose seed shall be more than the stars of heaven, even at his old right age. Incredible indeed. How do we acquire our faith? Or how do we build our faith? To the best of my understanding, faith is not something like a spiritual gift. It is not something which automatically grows in you through hearing the word of God alone. As we read in Romans 10, 14 to 17, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without preacher? Amen. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? Amen. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by word of God. The yeah, Apostle Paul was asking some pertinent questions. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Many Christians, as well as non-Christians, have been baffled while their prayers are never answered. That's why the fact that sometimes some of these prayer supplications are accompanied with fasts. For a non-believer in Christ who gets into trouble, for her child gets into trouble and asking others to pray for her child, while she could not stoop to Christ for help, how can such prayer be answered? Even if the whole nation pray for such a child. The woman with the issue of blood knew very well that her infirmity made her unclean to approach Jesus since in the olden days, a woman during the time of her period, she was set aside from performing certain duties until she completed her period. But modern science and awareness in the West have removed such taboo. This part of infirmities, as we read in Luke 8, 45 to 49, who touched me? Jesus asked, when they all denied it, Jesus Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out from me. Then the woman, seeing that she could no longer go unnoticed, came trembling and fell at his feet. In the presence of all the people, she told why she had touched him and how she had been instantly healed. Then he said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Why did Jesus say to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you? 
Because Jesus will a short matter. When he raised her brother Lazarus from dead, as we also read in John 11, 26 to 27, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Secondly, how and how shall they believe in whom of they they have not heard? Last Sunday, when our reverend was preaching, we were reminded in the message about the importance of Bible study class for us all that call ourselves Christians. For some of us sacrificing our leisure time and comfort and struggle to come to Bible class, most of you will agree with me that you are no longer the same person you were when you first started coming to Bible study. We have all gained tremendously, both teachers and members of the church. What we have had and learned has helped us a lot in reinforcing our belief in Christ and build our faith. But there are so many Christians who honestly believe that they know all there is to know about God and Jesus. Hence, there is no need to attend any Bible class since they don't intend to become a servant of God or a pastor. Can these people seriously say that their relationship with Christ is the same as those followers who are spending more of their time like Mary, sister of Martha, at the feet of Jesus, hearing or learning from the Master? Was well, this not what the Master was saying in Matthew 13, 10 to 16? The disciples came to him. They asked, why do you use stories and parables when you speak to the people? He replied, because you have been given the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, it has not been given to outsiders. Amen. Everyone who has this kind of knowledge will be given more, Amen. more knowledge. Amen. In fact, there we have very much. If anyone doesn't have this kind of knowledge, even what little they have will be taken away from them. That is why I use stories when I speak to the people. I say, they look, but they don't really see. Amen. They listen, but they don't really hear or understand. In them, the words of the prophet Isaiah came true. He said, you will hear, but you will never understand. You will see, but never know what you are seeing. Amen. The hearts of these people have become stubborn. They can barely hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes. They might hear with their ears. They might understand with their hearts. They might turn to the Lord and then He will heal them. Amen. Isaiah 6, 9, 10. But blessed are your eyes because they see and blessed are your ears because they hear. Amen? Amen. And then thirdly, and how shall they hear without a preacher? In this statement, the position that God places preachers in his redeeming plan is of paramount importance. And this is why the Lord, knowing that after his ascension, that we call false preachers, false teachers, and preachers of this world who compromise the words of God to suit the laws of mankind. <clears throat> Many surely will be called, but only a few will be chosen. The Lord said in Matthew 5, 18 to 20, For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law Amen. until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the list of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, 